So in this video, we'll show you the basics of how to control Blender. I'll walk you through the interface. So let's get started. This is the very simple image that we're going to render. So when you open a new general file in Blender, you'll see a 3D viewport window containing a camera, a cube and a light. You also see an outliner window containing a list of all the objects in your scene. Properties window, where you can change the properties of the world, modifiers, particles, physics, uh, materials and textures, etc. And you'll also see a timeline where you can make animations. You can change any of the window types by clicking on the uh, icon in the corner and picking a new type of window. You can resize the windows by dragging the edges. And if you wanted to make a new window, then go to the corner of one till a little cross appears and then just drag from that. So in your viewport, you can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel or two fingers on your trackpad if you're using a laptop. You can pan around by dragging this hand icon and then you can uh, change the angle of your view by dragging on these set of axes. You can also press in your mouse wheel and use that to change the angle of your view. So to move this object, select it and then press G to grab. If you wanted to move it along the Y axis, press G followed by Y to move it along the Y axis, X to move it along the X axis, and Z to move it along the Z axis. To scale it, press S. And once again, you can press S followed by X, Y, or Z to scale along any of those axes. For example, I'm gonna scale it along the Z axis. You can then rotate it by pressing R. The same as before, you can rotate it along a particular axis by pressing R followed by X, Y, or Z. If you did rotate something and then you wanted to elongate it again, for example, in the same axis you did before, so along this direction, you can press S and then Z to scale it about the world Z axis and Z again to scale it by the object Z axis. You can change the view of your uh, viewport window by using these toggles in the corner. So you can go to the simplest view, which is the wireframe. That will just show your edges and vertices. The solid view, which will show you grey objects. The materials view, where you can see the materials applied to your objects, but then with just artificial lighting. And then the render view, which will show you your materials, as well as the actual lighting in your scene. So that will be the closest to what you'll actually render at the end. I'm going to go back to the solid view for now. Let's say we wanted to model this object. So go from object mode to edit mode. And you'll see we can select vertices, edges or faces. I'm going to go to vertices. You can select just one vertex and press G to grab it. You can select, for example, a whole uh, plane of vertices. Go to, for example, click on the x-axis. And you'll notice if you try to select the whole plane, it will only select the ones that are visible. So if you want to select the whole plane, press Alt-Z, and it will take you into x-ray mode. So now when you select them, you'll see it will select all of the objects in that plane, all of the vertices in that plane, sorry. So now you can press G to grab those. And the same as before, you can press G followed by a particular axis to move them along just one axis. You can scale them by pressing S. And then you can extrude them. So duplicate the vertices and extend them from where they currently are by pressing E. So E and it will automatically extrude along the z-axis. I'm going to scale them down a bit. And if you wanted to make this corner look a bit more smooth, select the middle plane, and then press Control b and it will bevel it. So if you drag outwards, 
automatically it will just have one segment. So open up the Devil tab and increase the number of segments until it looks smooth. You can then go back to object mode and you'll see now it's got um, these lines across it where it's got the bevel segments. If you wanted to make that look smoother, you can leave XO mode, so Alt Z to go back to solid view and then right click and shade smooth. Now let's add a new object. So select everything in your scene to get rid of it. You can drag your cursor over it or press A to select all objects and press X and enter to delete them. Press Shift A to add a new object and we'll add a mesh. And let's add the monkey. So when you add a new object, you can open up the Add Object tab. You can change the number of properties about it. For example, its size or in some objects, the number of faces it has or the number of um, segments that it has. But we'll just leave this as it is. Next, we're going to make this look a bit smoother. So we're going to add a modifier. So what a modifier does is essentially change the geometry of your object without actually having to go into edit mode and model it. So you can go to the modifier properties, add a new modifier, and we're going to add a subdivision surface. And what that does is essentially, if you use a Catmull Clark subdivision surface, will average out the distance in between each of these uh, original pairs of vertices and add a new vertex in between them. So essentially half the faces for each level that you add. So if I add another one, it will make it smoother. You've got the levels visible in your viewport and the levels visible in your render. So generally you want the render ones levels to be at least the same as your uh, viewport ones, if not higher. So then right click and shade smooth. To look at the monkey face on, click the Y axis. And next we're going to add some lighting so we can choose a material in our background. So go to the render view so you can see the lighting. Press Shift A to add a light. I'm just going to use a point light. Press G to grab it and move it somewhere else. And then going to change the power. So go to the little bulb icon. I'm going to set the power to really quite bright. So I'm going to set it to uh, 50,000. I want another one of these lights at the same power. So I'm going to right click and duplicate objects. G to grab it and I'm going to drag it along the Y axis to move it in front of the monkey. Now that we've done that, we can choose a material for our monkey. Select the monkey and go to the material properties. You can select a material that you previously made from the drop down menu. You can add a new material. So we'll keep a principal BSDF surface because it's the most versatile of, the, of, the, of all the surfaces. You can choose to add um, translucent ones, glass emission, ones that glow, um, but you can also make those out of the principal BSDF surface. So we'll change the base colour to be maybe a sort of gold. I'll turn the metallic up to one. And I'm going to reduce the buffness to about 0 0.2. And you can um, change the transmission so to make it look like a transmissive material index of refraction, and then you can change the emission color and strength to make it glow. So next we'll add the background. So there's a lot of things you can do with the background using nodes, adding textures and um, HDRI files, for example, but we'll cover that in a different video. For now, we'll just keep a basic color. So leave the surface as background and choose color. I'm just gonna set it to black. So if we're happy with that, we're going to add a camera. So press Shift A and choose a camera. It will automatically be in the centre of your scene, so you can press G to grab it and move it around, and R to rotate it. Or if you're happy with the view you're looking at, go to View, 
align view, and then align active camera to view. That will show us a cover view that we're looking at. If you wanted to change the zoom of the camera, go to the camera properties and change the focal length. So if you decrease it, it will zoom out. If you increase it, it will zoom in. I'm going to leave it at 50. I'm going to move the monkey just so it's a little bit more in the center. And if you're happy with that, go to render and then render image. So I hope this video has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you.